Good afternoon, dear guys and dear ladies. You're watching Kaya's Zine. Okay, so hello everyone. Kaya's Zine is today here at Kuopio Rock in Kuopio, Finland, and we have the pleasure to talk to Marko Hieta. Very good afternoon. So, how's the summer been? Summer, it's been really hot. I've been spending most of it in Spain. Okay. Yeah, so at the, at the coastline to Mediterranean, it's been 30, a little bit over. So, so it's still bearable, but I hear that in the inland you go over 40. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's been, I guess, yeah. quite rough for the people. Yeah, I guess so. But anyways, yeah, I, I managed to get myself a kind of a... It was supposed to be a winter palace, but now I've been spending more time there. Okay, so yeah. and now you have also made a comeback to States and played shows with Northern Kings in, as well as a solo show. So indeed. how has it been? It's, it's been really good. But the Northern Kings, I mean, it's over 10 years far that we've done anything together. And now that we got together, it's actually been really good fun. I mean, everybody's really relaxed, in good humor and feeling good. and. And it's nice that when you have a this heavy metal vocalist job tends to be pretty heavy. You don't really have to worry about the voice that much when there's three other guys to to patch you up if you fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been sort of like very relaxed feeling to play those shows again. Yeah. And with the solo shows also it's been yeah, very nice. It's uh, I was well Everybody who, who's been reading something about what I've been doing and not doing uh, uh, well know that I consider that I might not be coming back. But I did. And now it's fun. But last year you were supposed to do the Raskas Teolo shows, but you only yeah. did like one show and then left the tour. So you weren't like ready to come back then. No, not really. And um, yeah, and that was one of the things that happened also because it's the darkest time of year and I just had way too much time to just stay in the darkness. So I got really down and uh, things went good. There was a lot of things still to be handled and taken care of and find for, find the solutions and everything, which then all this started to unravel after the new year and the spring. Okay, so that was the sort of turning point for you to get like more into light again so to say yes indeed you because well yeah well they find found this thing that i apparently i have an attention disorder it's not full full adhd but a relative close relative and after getting this medication that changes your noradrenaline amounts in your body suddenly all that anxiety in like three weeks it it just went away. I was like really surprised to find myself, hey, I'm peaceful. So how is it with playing shows when you get that massive adrenaline rush? Well, at the shows it's um, it's just totally fine to go a little bit more wilder than you <laughs> usually are. <laughs> okay, so you notice it like that way. Yeah, 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 I notice it that way. That, uh, yeah. Was it the easy decision to do these shows with Northern Kings or did you have to like think about it that do, do I want to come back and do this? Yeah, I really had to think about it and guys were asking me to either confirm or not for quite a while until I said, okay, I, I'll do it because well, it, it, I think it was in, in February this year that I said to the guys, that, okay, I'll, I'll be coming over and doing them. Things okay. are good enough for that, I, I suspect, even though they weren't that good yet at that time. but. I was already getting better. So obviously we have lived in quite different world for the past two years yeah. due to the pandemic. Yes. So what kind of like period this was for you? Was it like sort of like searching yourself again or how do you describe it yourself? Yeah, the pandemic was like it forced us to stop. And then you spend a year home thinking about things, what have gone wrong, what has gone right. And according to that, I made some decisions. Which, which were obviously to, to my well-being was that I will need smaller circles for now. Okay. Maybe later, but, but for now I'm, I'm not going to be doing huge stages around the world. I'll leave that to some other people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was announced in January last year that you will be parting ways with Nightwish. Mm. So what went through and was it like a longer process that you had to think about before making the final decision for that? Yeah, it was a long process. Of course, the COVID year that was there 
and when, when I had a lot of time for soul searching, it obviously gave me the like the last incentives to that I, I need something something else that if I just continue with this I'm just gonna get sicker and sicker. And, but of course it's a process. Well I've been chronic depressive since 2010, 2011. So I've been I've been on a permanent medication ever since. But sometimes you get you get used to the meds you will need more we did raise them during the years also but it just didn't work and now that we started i started to do them i had a psychotherapy for over four years now and then i also talked to psychiatrists and some doctors and and did that also in spain and then my psychiatrist here in finland said that i should do these adhd neuropsychological tests which i then did in spain and okay i got it but how lengthy it was like overall to do the decisions that you will leave nice because i i heard that you asked from the guys like already when you were doing like promotion for human nature that you are maybe within the band and then they said mm -hmm. to you that maybe you should reconsider and you reconsidered and did like everything for that album yeah that I had been thinking about it for a while. Let's say that because of, I had a lot of weight and uh, I, I tend to, well, with the attention disorder, it, it tells me that when there are lots of trouble, then the disorder makes it into a real, you know, chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you are overthinking. Yeah, there's a shitload of stuff coming and going and no peace anywhere. And I was, uh, for a year or two, I was already like waking up every night at three o'clock to bad dreams and anxiety and so i'd say that the whole process probably started already with my former divorce that was a that was a very sad time when you think about your kids and your broken homes and all that so um and then when i when i started to get clear from that then there were well all kinds of things i don't really want to go to any deeper to what kind of things i've gone through but i've gone through enough and so was it like very difficult process for you to make the human nature album because of that yeah it was and is that is, is there like some reason why your role was like basically a little bit smaller than it normally is no, you normally that, have quite a lot of singing parts in nice yeah, I, I think that was basically the original idea was to have that We'll do a couple of solos or one solo for me and Troy, and then rest floor, and then the harmonies. That was that was the idea originally for the. So I don't know if it affected. Okay, things. so it was sort of like as planned. Yeah, I think it was sort of as planned, but at that time, I already had serious trouble with concentrating and serious trouble with with a constant black cloud over my head. Okay, so what happened like after you made now? A comeback to the band have you been like feeling well and now everything is sort of rolling again normally yeah, or? coming back with my own band yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it seems that so far because well in the smaller circle it's easy to you know just stay within a close communication with the guys and everybody knows everything and Nobody has any kind of doubts about my sicknesses or anything. So it, it's kind of easier to take care of it because a lot of times I already realized that I'm becoming an anchor weighing the whole group down in Nightwish. And it's not a nice feeling to have. It's a... Yeah, you tend to blame yourself. You tend to feel really guilty about what you are. Uh, that's the sick thing about depression and anxiety that the more you have it, the more bad you feel that you're all like that. Yeah, yeah, but of course, I, I, I would imagine like splitting with the band you have been in 20 years is, is always rough for everybody, because it's like, as you as mm. you could put it, a marriage that you sort of yeah. go through. Yeah, and then, then, and then you start to think that, it, that if I'm there like in some backstage corner looking like a there's a guy with his personal black cloud who's gonna well I'm just gonna be maybe ruining it for everybody so but now you are focusing more on the positive side 
solo stuff, doing Northern King shows, probably mm -hmm. gonna be involved with the Raskas Yolo again. That I suspect that I cannot leave that undone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but how does like the overall future look? Have you been like creative on your own, or or has it been like difficult to be creative on the pandemic? No, time? not really. I mean, I've been writing quite a lot. There is, there's a lot of lyrical stuff, and there's a lot of different pieces of music and riffs and choruses and verses that don't necessarily match into the same song but all kinds of stuff there is so solo album will definitely get a continuation sometime later and you were happy with the first solo album I guess you got yeah. very good feedback uh, everywhere and you did quite successful European tour for it indeed yo and the one thing that I really liked about the solo album myself this is of course a little bit smug since it's my album uh, but but the whole variety of different moods from one song to another. Yeah, it was very varied album. Uh, yeah, and all the songs had good, good like different identity of their own. So I think we're gonna be going with the same kind of ideology that anything goes as long as we feel it's good. So do you already have some kind of timelining, or do you have like almost all songs ready, or, no, or are you still really. like putting pieces together? Putting pieces together. There are a couple of you know couple of songs on the hard disk that wouldn't probably take that long to actually finish. So something like a, give a taste or a single or something next winter, it's very much possible. But you will mm -hmm. still do music in the future, like health comes first and then yeah. when you feel the right you put out stuff and you don't yes. like have to worry too much or stress yeah. too much about it. Indeed, yo, and being in contact with different managements and booking agencies and yeah. festivals and whatever they always try to take a piece of you with it the, the more questions you ask the more things you answer the more <laughs> questions they will ask that's how it goes uh, yeah unfortunately so, yeah, so i just have to be really careful that i know these days to say hey i'm off you finish this <laughs> so what's the situation with tarot that's uh, that's kind of open in the air i mean when spirit died the drummer of course people were asking that are we gonna be doing something and we have some unfinished song stuff also on the studio hard disk and like that which would be nice to finish maybe some time to play the songs but at least for me and Jan keyboard player for both of us the rock and roll should be played with a grin on your face and happiness in your heart and all that and it feels a little bit sad yeah, because so the we happiness isn't there yet. Yeah, because well, we were together with the guys for over 30 years. Uh, at that time, you tend to build some kind of a brotherhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess that band was a very strong brotherhood. Indeed, you. So I, I saw a picture of you and Tarja. It was like a year or two ago. And I guess you live now in Spain both, or, or do you? Like quite uh, closely even to each other. Not too close. If I heard right, they were living in Marbella, which is more of the southern tip, and we're we're somewhere there on the side of Mediterranean, like a halfway, okay, close by Alic Alicante. Have you had any discussions to make music now together? No, but no. I believe that the management guys have definitely <laughs> talked about it. <laughs> or oh, if we could get these people together. But you would be like interested in making maybe music with her, or or what's like your chemistry with well, her no. nowadays? Since you well, do the Rascas de Yolo together, yeah, it, and it, it was fine. We had talks about the old times and some tears in the corners of the eyes and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So all is good with us. So actually, hmm. you never that, know. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> gotta, gotta figure out if I got some some nice song for a duet. So before we wrap Team sucks a little bit about the future. Mm -hmm. How does it look like? Well, it looks like I'm going to be a father again. <laughs> yeah, congratulations <laughs> about that. That's yeah. a big thing. I yeah. know I have a boy who is four now. Yeah, so. it, it is a bigger thing than any of what we've been talking about here at the yeah. moment. It is a way bigger, personally. But yeah, so that's a good thing. That's a very positive and great thing. But like I said, there's that solo stuff which will get continuation. And uh, with the Northern Kings guys, it's been so fun to do the shows and be together after 10 years and something again I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we end up doing more shows or even music but so far it's been uh, just uh, discussions yeah and I'm taking it easy if guys get into it that we could actually start then I can put it I can have some input to that 
but I'm not offering yet. I'm but you are not like feeling in a way to do a lot of touring in the future, that you will do a little less and, and more like focused stuff, maybe. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. I don't know, because to be honest, I love doing shows. Uh, I guess every musician is an yeah. adrenaline junkie. Yes. You like uh, being on stage. Yeah, yeah, I do. I love being on stage, but it is the logistic and the personal life hassle and everything that um, because the show logistics are so insane. You you spend two hours max on that stage, but you sometimes you travel for days, spend nights in hotels and yeah. sleepless nights. Uh, yeah. And all that, and somehow the show, that two hours maximum, somehow it always gets you up. Oh, this was worth it, it was fun and all yeah. that. So I love doing shows, but I hate the logistics and traveling. And I hate airports and I hate airplanes. They're full of people, those goddamn plastic tubes. <laughs> I don't like them people, they're fucking cancer on there. Earth. There should be some kind of teleport that you could go like in a minute. Teleport would, teleport would be a real, real, real solution for these things. Yeah. I've been trying to do it by the power of will. So far it hasn't worked. <laughs> <laughs> hey Marco, thanks a lot mm. for the time and, and good luck for tonight's show as well as for the future. Anything okay. you want to say as a closer to the fans? It's time to rock again.